just doing a little research. Trying to get my garden together for spring. That's another, what is it, five, six months from now? Mixing your own fertilizers. Oh, hello. How you doing? I enjoyed your show uh, that evening. I enjoyed it. It was very nice. Very informative. A lot of good information. I said, oh, my goodness. Um, I had something to happen in my garden about three days ago. It was a warm day. It's warm this time of year, it's being around 50 here in Maryland. And I was out there feeding my uh, collard green and kale and couldn't help noticing a number. Well, you, you're quite welcome. <laughs> uh, I, I couldn't help noticing this group of tomato plants that were growing. And this time of year, we, we you know, we're in fall, and they were growing in a place where I didn't put them. And they were healthy, dark purple stems, beautiful dark green leaves, and they were grown close together like this. That's how they were grown. And I, and I said, wait a minute, this is from a tomato that fell from the, the, the vine and it was already very, very uh, ripe and it fell there and it laid there on the surface of the soil, did not grow for weeks on end. The plants are long gone from the low temperatures and everything and I'm out there, and because I'm paying close attention to very small plants, such as the kale and collard, I have to look down and I, you know, and I said, those are tomato plants, and they're growing close together. Where did they come from? And I said, they came from, you know, the, the uh, cherry tomatoes that, that were growing on my property. And they weren't dug in. They weren't fed or watered by me directly. 
And I happened to notice that they were extremely healthy. They obviously got nourishment from the tomato they came from. Uh, and put them in a southern facing window over a winter. Uh, I will look into that. Thank you. Because I, I, I could do that. I could do that. You know, I mean, you know, they were, they were roughly about maybe inch and a half, two inches tall. Very healthy plants. And I just thought they were interesting. And but they were growing close together. Now, here's my here's my thinking on this. I believe you can grow plants close together and still produce fruit. Still produce fruit. Because the packages that we get say, spread things out three feet, spread things out 18 inches or whatever. Yeah, yeah, they were volunteers. Now, when fruit falls from a plant, uh, let's see. Uh, oh, okay. But we, you have peppers that have a number of seeds in them. And, and think about it. When they fall from the plant and they lay close together, you might have a tomato that might have, uh, a, a, well, they all have a number of seeds in them. And when they hit the ground and they're ripe, they all grow. And what happens is that all of those seeds that are growing close together, they don't fail. I believe they will go on to produce fruit, given the right condition. Peppers would do the same, tomatoes would do the same, and so on and so forth. Um, and, you know, I noticed that a lot of gardeners don't really grow things close together, but they recommend some trees can be grown close together, like they call high density, uh, planting where, uh, they showed, um, uh, uh, some of the, uh, videos and information on, um, what do they call it, uh, Google recommend that you could, instead of buying a tree that's been grafted with, with four or five different uh, pieces of fruit on it uh, to just plant four trees in one spot and if one tree were to fail you would not necessarily lose the other three and and so I thought that was an interesting uh, way of looking at it Oh, okay, that makes sense. Makes sense. Yeah, I mean, because I, I mean, really, the trees that I have on my property, I'll give you a good example. I didn't do, uh, I, I, you know, I could have done it at that time, but I didn't do the uh, putting the trees in, in one hole, you know, all four of the trees. But what I did do, is I planted my fruit trees um, 21 inches apart. Um, and I put them, you know, 20, like I said, 21 inches apart. And they grew, but they stay close to a certain size. Do you follow me? They stay close to a certain height and, and that sort of thing. Um, and my thinking was that I could help control the size of them. And also kind of stress the tree enough to kind of keep, you know, the size down. So one thing I'm looking at is um, my trees. I looked at them today. Very healthy trees. Beautiful trees. Uh, winter sets in. I remember one winter 
where the mouth cut all the most all the way around the trunk of the tree, and I could have avoided that, but you know, it didn't die. The tree didn't die. And here it is, two years later, the, the cut is still there, but the tree has grown like a callus mostly around where it where the cut was. So the trees, you know, bounce back. Yes, yes, yep, absolutely. Um, my whole deal was to, to grow these trees close together and uh, to to have more room space with, you know, where I could put even more types of trees in. But then I ran into a problem, which, which was uh, after I bought all the apple trees I was interested in and I bought all of the plums I was interested in, and, and some plums, uh, I, I can tell you a story about that, but I don't want to get sidetracked. I got those free. Some companies sent me stuff that, that was in their orders, but I didn't order them. And they got them mixed up some kind of way. They sent me one time they sent me 10 trees. Another time they sent me um, like six trees. And so I called them back and I said, listen, you, you, you're sending me trees. Uh, you got to stop sending me trees. Because the trees that you're sending me, I didn't order these. And he said, well, well just keep them. Just keep them. And I didn't want to see the trees die. And... I had no room for these trees. So I wound up giving the trees to the church. And I said, listen, these are apple trees. And these are, what was the other trees? Apples, pears. And I said, here, you can have these trees. And, um, you know, that was the last I saw the trees. But then six more came. And I put an uh, ad up on the uh, YouTube and I asked the people, what do you think I should do? Should I just get rid of them? Or should I try to grow them? And everyone said, uh, try to find some space in your yard for them. And I said, okay. I put the trees in, which was, um, they were all plum trees. One was a Santa Rose. The other one was a, something called a Bruce. I think it's Bruce. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, because I saw some of the um, uh, the apple trees you were growing. I saw them, and, and it, it, it's it's a really good deal. Uh, now I'm like this with when it comes to uh, as far as pruning, I would much rather not have to prune, but it made me feel like my yard was being taken over because th these trees were labeled to grow eight to ten feet. And here they were 21 feet tall. And these are supposed to be dwarfs. And I'm thinking, okay, you're feeding them good. You got them in the right location. The trees are doing what they're supposed to do. And man cannot uh, uh, absolute uh, say that this tree is going to grow eight feet tall. Man can't make that call. The trees were 21 feet tall. And now still, the tallest tree that I have in my yard is a, a pear. And it, it was labeled when I got the pear tree, it said that it was a um, Bartlett. And I'm not sure it's a Bartlett because all the pears that it produces are all green. No matter how long I leave them on the tree, they're just all green. So I'm thinking, okay, Something is different here. A Bartlett should have some blush on it. But the trees are just, the, excuse me, the pears are perfectly green. So 
like a medium sized pear, I want to say. Yeah. You bite into it, it's kind of gritty, um, sweet, crunchy. Um, and, and, and that's the best, best, best way I could. And Bartlett, sometimes I've seen some in the grocery store where they were a yellowish color. And that tells me that they were ripe. But none of my uh, pears ever got that color. They just stayed green. So I'm thinking that it's what I have is some type of variety of green pear. Now, okay, thank you for that. Thank you for that. That's, that's what I figured when I go to prune is that I'm doing something that could be causing some of my trees not to even produce fruit. Oh, okay, I see what you're saying. But I got to tell you, when they get big, when my trees get big, you should see it. We had one year and it rained. I mean, it rained all week long and then the next week and then into the next week and then the next. And we started wondering what was going on. Um, the trees didn't do nothing but grow. That's all they did when that, when that happened. They were, they were spracing out, getting wider across. They were getting taller and they were even blocking the security cameras at one point. And I said, oh my goodness, what's going on with these trees? Oh, hello everyone. This is mine and family. And so I just think that it's just a, it's an interesting turn of events when you're dealing with uh, uh, nature. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, but um, I'm with you on that because I think I was telling you the last time I was online, I'm going to uh, try to grow two grapevines to every tree because these are these, um, they call called uh, Neptune, Neptune grapes. Uh, a, a green grape with no seeds in it. And it says that it's a very good ta uh, table break. Thanks for the thumbs up. Thank you. Um, the latest report on the food situation here in the US. They're still talking about the uh, Romaine lettuce and that they had reported tonight that they have uh, uh, 28 people in the hospital and uh, something like 40 other people that are sick and one person was a three-year-old and um, and some were reported with uh, kidney uh, and liver failure due to uh, the uh, problem with the romaine so I thought that was interesting I would share that because that's one of the reasons why uh, we grow some of our own food. I've never gotten sick off any of the food I grow.
Okay, okay. Now I think you're talking about uh, just just find this you know a piece of rope on one of the branches and and you know put the um the the uh, grape plant somewhere underneath the tree and let it grow up the rope. Got it. Thank you. Because I was wondering how to do that because look, I, I put the other one uh, 12 inches off of the, the trunk of the tree and I kept trying to, you know, kind of move the, uh, the, the uh, you know, the grape vine over there where it needs to be and of course it didn't cooperate. So now I know to go out there and just string it up. I appreciate that. Thank you. And when they grow up and they go into that tree and they'll start grabbing on everything up in the tree and you will have a tree that has um, a combination of grapes and apples, grapes and plums, grapes and uh, what we call those things, um, pears. I'm thinking about this stuff makes me hungry. Yes, apples and grapes. Same area. Yes, in the same area. Beautiful. Beautiful. Now, one plant I have debated about and I'm not going to do, and that's that one called a, uh, a pomegranate because pomegranate, I, I looked at some of the, the photos of the pomegranate. You can grow it as a tree, you can grow it as a bush, but either way, uh, it grows as a bush naturally. But the pomegranate has the ability to get really wide across and really tall. And it just, I saw one in a, uh, um, in a uh, video that took up so much space, you knew that you had to have a lot of space to grow this. Growing them in a greenhouse. Growing them in a greenhouse. Well, what do you mean you grow them in a greenhouse? The pomegranate or? Oh, the pomegranate. It's got to be because right up here they can't really tolerate this cold. Uh, it said the lowest uh, zone is 7, and I'm at 7B, and uh, it's, it's just a. It's just right at the edge of where you know the cold and it can get cold here uh, uh, some seasons it's down to uh the colds i received it was down to like nine degrees and um hell we was even surprised that some of the cars would start up so you go to work i believe in you and me I believe that we will be in love eternally, as far as I can see. You will always be the one for me. I tell you, boy, it's gardening is something now. Um, I'm not going to buy my tea on eBay because I don't know what you're actually getting. Grow things, grow anything in a greenhouse with the rocket stove. Ah, the rocket stoves. I've, I've seen them. I've seen a beautiful, beautiful way of um, creating heat. I've seen some online that they were making out of cinder blocks. Gold pipes. Yeah, rocket stoves. I am, um, Going to this year, uh, before I plant my seeds, some of the seeds I'm going to soak them 
uh, for a few hours before I put them in the ground because I just want that anything anything I can do to speed up the process uh, naturally um, is what I'm going to do because I want the uh, the process to go smooth and I'm also looking at uh, compost. And, and, and something else, I, I watched this video today, and, and tell me what your thoughts are on this, uh, because here, here's, what, here's what I think. They were showing a gardener that was saying he wants to grow more peppers, and he used worm casting in a bag to do that. And, and I'm thinking, why would you buy worm casting when your when you're, um, compost should be full of worm casting? I didn't understand that. And actually, I never understood this. Because when worms crawl through your compost, I'm sure they don't leave the compost pile and go somewhere else and go to the bathroom and then come back to the pile. They go right in that pile. So why should I go out and buy worm cats? Your compost especially if I was been sitting there a year and a half, two years, should be filled with worm casting. Okay, okay, yeah. My lady's been telling me for the longest time to put up a greenhouse. I mean, because you could actually make them things at home. You don't have to uh, run out and, and, and purchase them for arm and a leg. You can make them. It's just too easy to make to to actually go out and say, let me get somebody uh, $800 for a greenhouse. But if you don't have the time, that's one way of going about it. Uh, let's see. Worms eat the compost and... Microbes do the rest. Absolutely. Absolutely. So what are your thoughts on that? Do you think that it, it, it makes sense to you to go out and purchase uh, worm casting? I love um, taking the time and, 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 and just grow things on your own because everything that you need, everything you need to grow your garden, everything you need, if you break it all the way down to its lowest common denominator, everything you need is on your property anyway. Everything you need for your garden is on your property. If you have an open ground, you got weeds, you got grass, uh, you got limbs from other trees, that you can hack up and cut into portions and put them around fruit trees, put them around fruit bushes, um, put the grass uh, clippings around these these plants, the trees, the bushes. Um, you could use them to uh, mulch around your uh, your your your, your um, what do we call them things? Some vegetables. Everything is there, and you don't even have to go to a box store. You don't have to do it. Hello, how you doing? Backyard. Yep, you're right. You can build that stuff. Yeah. Let's see. Lots of plastic and glass. Free building. Uh huh. Let's see. Free to build. A greenhouse and to devour worm cancers if I had to make compost 
and you will have worms. But someone else will have to come. And you know, so here's what I did one time. It, 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 and it's, it's been a long time since it's been like that. Uh, when I first started gardening, and I kept hearing everyone, uh, you know, that, that would say, build a compost pile, build a compost pile. So I go out and I collect all these leaves. I mean, I'm collecting from neighbors at night when I get off work or daytime. It's kind of risky when you're collecting leaves at night. But they were in bags. And, and, and I don't know what the person was thinking that was in the house. So, I'm, you know, the car pulling up and, and, and grabbing all these bags and making multiple trips. And, um, and, um, and I wasn't thinking about the safety factor. You know, should I have been out at a time of night? Because you know how things are today. People are allowed to go out there and shoot first and ask questions later. But uh, I would have got the leaves. And I remember putting them in this pile. And I remember putting the grass clippings in there. And I was like, oh, this is great. This is, this is how it's supposed to be done. And out of nowhere, uh, that big pile that I put there started to go down to almost nothing. And when I would dig through it, it was this black, uh, soil. That was, remember that. This is my first gardening experience. Inside, near the corner, the edges, the, or the middle, were these huge night crawlers. And yeah, 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 yeah. And you, you're at night. <laughs> that's right. That's right. They see me out there. They allowed to say, oh my God, somebody's in, in our. Um, they are yard grabbing those, you know, the bags of leaves. Get the gun. Let's make sure that it's not a crazy person. Uh, because they don't know. But um, the night crawlers that were in the compost pile, they were huge night crawlers. And I'm totally fascinated by this. I'm, I'm like, wow, look at these worms. Look at the size of these. Some of them were so big that when I would reach in and move the combo to the side and I would see it, I would immediately jump back a little and see whether or not that's some kind of snake or is it a worm. Once I discovered it was a worm, I'd go to grab it and it would, strong now, strong worm, and it would just pull itself right into, to back into the combo file. And, and, and so I'm thinking, Wow, if I can get the shovel out, bad idea. Because now I'm cutting in half huge worms that didn't want anything to do but to live in the compost pile. So I said, uh, let me, uh, 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 yeah, yeah, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, that's what I use them for. I was going after bluegill, uh, and pumpkin seed, uh. So what, what happened was I'm going after these worms and I discovered that I want to get a cup and put like about 12 or, or, or two dozen in there. And they're beautiful. They, they're they healthy. You can see it. They're all that little stickiness on them and the big, huge egg sack they had around them. And I said, I said, wow. I said, and something said, don't take too many. Don't take too many because you, you, you're you not going to need all these right now. Don't take four or five dozen out of here. And you can get four or five dozen easy. Don't do that. So I would leave the pile alone, and it would, they would all come back again. And the next night or the night after that, there'd be more worms back in the pile. And then there'd be these huge spiders that they look like uh, jumper spiders. And on her sack were all of these tiny um Spiders. And I'm looking at her, you know, most people would take something like that and spray it or kill it uh, just for the hell of it. And I said, no, 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 we're not going to do that. You disturbed her. She ran out of your compost pile. Just leave her alone and let her, you know, settle and she'll go back to where she was originally. Because there's no need in doing that. And to kill them for what? Kill them for what? I mean, their life is just as valuable as yours to you. Uh, to them, it is. That's what I mean. It, it's very important to them. So um, I found little 
uh, salamanders in the uh, no, they were underneath pieces of carpet I had in the yard. Salamanders. They were dark in color, maybe four inches long. And I remember reading something in the gardening, uh, and, you know, in the gardening section of, of my books, and it says, do not kill these. They're an endangered species. Uh, just if you find them, release them and let them, you know, they're part of the chain. But I said, where did this little lizard come from? And he didn't seem like he was harmful. But then again, I didn't know. But I, I held him and he crawled around on my hand and then I simply released him. Yep, he was real shiny. I remember that, real shiny. So that's all I want to say on that note, folks. And this is... I'm going to cut this short, but uh, this has been the morning garden. Um, uh, talking about improving soil and making soil better. Because if you do, that's where you're going to get your big, healthy uh, plants from. And some of that stuff that we're learning in these books, and I mean, it's just, I'm sorry to say it, folks. This is just me. Some of that stuff's wrong. I mean, it works to a degree. But then if you follow what Mother Nature does, you follow what she does. I mean, when, uh, 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 when you see an apple fall from a tree and it's got seeds in it, and it sits there on the ground and it rots, and then in no time at all, another tree comes up. That's how it's intended to be, you know. And nobody had to go out there and, and, and dig it in and, and fertilize it and loosen the soil and none of that. Stuff. None of that had to be done. It just made its way. Um, animals that eat these fruits and excrete them in different areas and then the tree comes up could be four blocks away from where you planted your tree uh the cherry tree, the cherries that you have on the tree the birds eat them and excrete those seeds and throughout your neighborhood there's cherry trees growing in areas that had to do with your trees that you put in there four or five years ago now you got trees growing in different areas and people don't know what they are but they're, they're cherry trees Hello, everyone, everyone. I'm, I'm just going to close out, but um, I will do a few more minutes. But I wanted to say that um, it's just so natural. Um, and, you know, when you, when, you, when you just open your mind up and you look at nature and see what's going just look at it and see what's going on. I mean, just pay attention. Um, you'll see things. It, it's a balance there. And when man comes in, man just screws it. He just he says, fertilize everything in the spring and summer. But Mother Nature was doing it in the fall and winter. In the fall and winter. Dropping its leaves, branches falling off of trees, lying on the ground, whole trees falling and lying on the ground. And you come back in a few years, that tree is no longer there. Um, grass that was growing four feet tall, five feet tall throughout different places. And, and then the snow falls, lays on top of that stuff, matches it to the ground. And now next year, it's brand new grass again. Brand spanking fresh grass all over again. The process starts over again. And it's an ample amount of food there for because I look at the grasshoppers and the snakes and I look at the um, all kind of insects that live there. And it, it's set up for them to survive. Man comes in, builds blacktop over it, cement or buildings or both. And he ruins acres of area where these animals once depended on. And nothing grows there when man when man comes around. Nothing wants to grow there. I mean, if man left it barren for a period of time, everything would, would grow back. But 
uh, man comes in and whatever man grows, whenever they try to sell you on that, yeah, we're going to go into the area, we're going to pay attention to the rules and regulations of nature, we're going to sit out uh, uh, our experts in and we'll make sure that the area stays wonderful and clean and, and everything will be wonderful. Listen, when man goes into any area, the first thing you see is devastation. That's what you see. He takes things down, he ruins things, and then he says, I don't know why you can't breathe the air that's in this uh, location, or wonder why people are getting sick that's around it. Um, because you've ruined the environment. You've dirtied up the water. You 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 killed the and poisoned the soil with your with your uh, with your machines and uh, and your uh, products that you produce from these machines. Uh, you know you see what they did with the ocean with all this plastic. I mean they can't say that that's not uh, imaginary. That that didn't just come out of nowhere. And now we're just catching up. We're trying to find ways to make. Uh, improvements and, and things get better, but they're not doing it because a lot of them are not. I'll put this way: a lot of them are not doing it because they're saying uh, we we need to do this because Mother Nature is suffering. You know, they're doing it because they say, "Wait a minute, the plastic that we dumped in the ocean, this, this plastic is worth money, and it's already been processed, so we could just grab this stuff, or we could uh, all these black tops that they're tearing out of lots and everything." They're not doing it because they need to make uh, things better or create a park in that area. They want to recycle it so they can sell it again. I mean, it's amazing, you know, because I saw in, in one video in some countries when I saw them growing food with trash, I was totally amazed by that. There was one lady that had a pump in China and she was pumping sewage water out of their uh, system, blowing it through a three-inch hose, it looked like. And she was blowing all that stuff all over her ground. And it was used as fertilizer. I said, oh, my God. That's all I said. And I tried to wrap my head around that and say, okay. She doesn't have money to afford fertilizer. I got that. And she was she stuck this hose down into the sewage uh, area, and she was pumping it all over the ground. There was another woman that had some acreage, and the truck pulled up and dumped all of this waste material on her ground for her to move it around. She got to move it around herself. Uh, and it was from the, uh, what do they call it? It's from, um, I always get that. Um, it's not the dump. They call it the uh, landfill. Landfill. Oh, my God. And the camera person rolled the camera, showed that what she just bought or whatever came there. She got it free or whatever. And they see the government allows them to do that because they can't afford uh, certain fertilizer. They, the camera person showed the iPhone containers. He scanned over. He showed um, he showed batteries from like flashlights and all that that was you know that, that were rusted out and opening up and everything showed that. Um, I mean, he showed trash. And so then they showed the dump area where she where they dumped it. Then they showed another area where she grew her crops. And let me just say this to you folks. They were the prettiest lettuce. Romaine, looked like romaine to me, that you ever want to see. They were pretty. I mean, and they asked her the question. They said, how do you know do you think that it's healthy for people to eat these vegetables and you're growing them with 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 trash as she said in her own language which was interpreted broken down for you 
uh, she said, it hasn't made me sick. I eat it all the time. I was done after that. I was done. I understood you got to eat. I got that. But um, it was interesting. It was very interesting. And people probably looked at the U.S. years back and saw the same thing when we were heavily spraying our grounds and crops and uh, and people who were in the know at that time from other countries that said, you know, we know that the chemicals that you're spraying on that ground and that uh, 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 those plants that you're consuming, that it is affecting your environment and it's affecting uh, your people, you know. Oh, hello, hello. Came in the room and said hello to everybody and morning garden. Um, but that's that's what I, I I mean I'm amazed by that. I'm amazed by you know what what because once your ground becomes addicted to man made chemicals, um and if your soul plants, if your soul plants that are not designed to grow the same way that um, that your native plants would, and see some of the plants that they produce now need so much. Uh, um, let's put it this way: the soil has to be so fertile, or they really won't grow well. And and they produce plants like that. Man-made plants. A lot of plants that I thought grew natural, and I found out years later that these plants were man-made. It was interesting uh, that I looked at the wait a minute, a corn was once a, a grass, and now they altered it so that it grows these big kernels and a big, you know, uh, uh, piece of. Uh, uh, I mean, it's incredible. I love it. I mean, you know, when you look at it, and and what was the other one? Broccoli. That's man-made. That's you know, and it's just it's just so much that man has done to alter certain plants so that we can eat. Good evening, everyone. Supreme Family God. I saw one video you put out. I think it was. I was trying to watch it, and it was like. Uh, it was uh it was it was pretty good but um you know it was uh didn't see you in the uh you know the, the frame so you know I was like okay this is this is something new that I said so but 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 all in all uh you're out there you're growing and you're trying to keep everything you know as copacetic as possible that's how you want to do it I just think that it's incredible. Everyone here has one thing in common. Everyone in here in this room right now is growing food. And some of them are growing. And I don't know what it was kind of embarrassing when people would say back in the day, oh, I'm growing food because we need to we need to eat better and I don't have the money to afford this stuff. And it was embarrassing to people to do that. I'm not embarrassed. I'm gonna tell you like this. Uh when I go into the grocery stores and I see what prices they have on that stuff and I look at the quality of it. And I remember going to the grocery store and I was shooting pictures um, of the vegetable and fruit stand and I showed close up of the of the uh, of all of the like they had like rocks in certain areas and then I saw the gnats flying all around it and I recorded all of this. And I recorded that and um, I remember calling the store and I said, uh, you're vegetables and fruit that they're, they're not clean i said that they're, they're rotting in the case there's gnats flying around them there's flies landing and eating uh in the rot spots of these uh, uh these, these vegetables and 
people were buying that stuff. And, you know, and I said, this is not good. This is not good. So when I made the call, the very next day, uh, I went up to that store and the whole stand was completely redone. It was, it was, they, they wiped it down, they cleaned everything, put fresh uh, decorations up and fresh fruits and vegetables. And they had everything looking really good. And even the, the, the little uh, mister they have that, that uh, uh, for some reason they sprayed it on, uh, was on. It would cut on every so many seconds and cut off. And that was never on before. Uh, so I never bought a vegetable from that store. Didn't like it. I was. I, I apologize. I did. I did. I bought a dollar and twenty-five cent worth of ginger, and it was kind of wrinkled, you know. But but I bought it anyway, and I grew it, and I've been growing it for years. Until one day I just got bored. But I was growing pounds of that stuff from a little bit that fits in the palm of your hand. I grew pounds of that stuff from uh from that little dollar twenty five cents. Yeah, I mean, you're doing a good job. You're doing a good job. I mean, you know, I see you out there growing stuff, and, and that's that's what's the important thing. But but here's the problem that I noticed that a lot of people are having. They're not having. They they they're, they're committed to what they're doing, uh, but they're not growing a lot of food. They're not growing a lot of food, and you know, it, most of us do have clay soil, and and some of you are, will admit that you have clay soil. And if you go with um, uh, with the method that the food forest permaculture is using, uh, which is a soil path, uh, you you will actually increase your yield. Another one is one that he uses as well, and I use it. That's what I use. I use uh, chop and drop. So when anybody ever tell you that, uh, I have people that, that looked at my videos and say. I like your soil. Your soil looks great. Your soil is wonderful. Your soil is awesome. That soil, folks, wasn't always like that. I had to get out of two habits. One, I stopped thinking of weeds as, as the enemy. Stop. And then I said, how can I use these weeds to grow me food? Which was another way of thinking. I said, I am not only not in nurse. I am. Well, that's a, that's a very good attitude. You you say you you are, you love growing food. You love growing yes. I say I have. Um, I, I love that. You, you say you've been saving all your cuttings and everything. Here's what I do, folks. I'm going to just tell you a little recipe that I do. I grow all my items in the spring and summer. When everything's done, I don't even, uh, I don't even, um, I don't clean it up. I do not clean it up. I go out there with one tool, and that's a real badass, um, Trimmer. That's what I go out there with, a trimmer. And that trimmer that I have, because I used to get the little $100 ones, $89 ones, and it, it was really no good. They don't run right. You got to keep pulling, 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 get them started. Uh, so I went out there and got a professional grade when I said I need a professional grade because when the professionals use a, uh, one, they need something to get out there and make that money. They don't need to be cutting off and acting crazy. Uh, and not having enough power to go through certain weeds because certain weeds are really thick, you know that yourself. And uh, you need that heavy line, and you need that, that, that horsepower, that speed of that, that blade going around. 
And so what I go out there with, I go out there with that weed trimmer, and I'm going to tell you folks, it just goes all through there and drops everything. Everything is dropped. And when everything's laying down, I leave it there, folks. And guess what? Come back in about two, uh, maybe the third day, but definitely the second, second or third day. And it's turned into brown. It looks like brown straw on the ground. And then another three or four or five weeks, it comes back again. And I go out there again, trim everything down, trim everything down. Guess what I'm doing while I'm doing it, folks? I'm feeding my soil. I'm feeding the soil because when that weeds hit the ground and that grass hits the ground, uh, all it's doing is feeding, uh, feeding the soil. And you got to go through there, but just don't let it get too high on you because then you got to fight more. But you want to go out there and, uh, and cut that down. And leave the roots in the ground. I used to pull them up from the roots and all that. And I said, why are you doing that? Let this weed grow back, you know, in the same spot. Because weeds are going to grow regardless. Uh, and then what you do with your plants is you pull them back 15 or more inches away from where your plants grow that you want to save, that you want to eat from, whether it be a pepper or a tomato or whatever. And that's what you want to do. But, but it's definitely... Uh, gives you all of the nutrients and it pulls all those minerals up from deep inside the ground and it feeds it to your plants. All it is, think of the weeds as this. They mine the ground and they put everything back on top when you cut them, when you cut them off. They mine. Now, if you're growing an awful lot of weeds on, in your property, I mean, an enormous amount of weeds, and that, that is a signal sometimes that you are having a problem with your soil, that the soil is not lacking nutrients because some weeds thrive on, on um, soil that doesn't have a lot of uh, uh, organic matter in it. All right, let's see what we got here. Let's see. Dee, 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 dee. You become a dangerous individual when you can grow your own food. Because nobody can really control you when you can control your own food. If something were to go on in this country the day or tomorrow, and where the, the grocery stores are all shut down, and you, you, a period of time there will be some people that will be out on pieces of land, and they will be guarding the land, and they will be growing their food, and they will still be survivors. But you can't. I mean, you can't grow anything only because you lack knowledge. Then you are at a disadvantage. Serious disadvantage. I've learned techniques like how to hide food. Uh, I remember one time I was, I was really heavy, heavily into that. Uh, uh, like potatoes, you can hide those. You put them in the ground and nobody knows they're there but you. They look like weeds when they grow on, unless there's a farm or a garden in the, in the area. They know what they're looking at. Um, corn is about the only vegetable that definitely you can look at and say, that's a garden up there. But if you want to hide a garden, um, I used to plant things in circles and squares and things because they, they would look like weeds. Only one would know that there is the person planted them. But when you plant in straight lines and you got raised beds and stuff like that, yeah, people know that stuff there. So I, I was just going through all of that at one point. That was, one, that was my um, homestead uh, period when I was like, oh, you know, what if, you know. Um, the hundred gallons of water that I have stored uh, in my uh, drum on the side of because uh, I don't even pay, I don't even pay to uh, water my garden. I stopped doing that. I thought that was crazy when I was you know I would see my water bill all jacked up and well, I'd be out there watering and afraid that you know how long I've been running this water, how long I've been running this water. You know I got tired of that. So what I did, I created these uh, this system where it's called um, uh, everybody know about them. It's called uh, uh, well water systems where you tie them into your, your gutter to, from your house and and I found one that I really 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 liked it was a it, it puts a small hole in the gutter like that and you, you run this rubber uh, unit in it catches the water it runs it into the drum plus the whole unit is sealed the whole unit is perfectly sealed so you don't have mosquitoes and ants and, 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 and all kind of different insects drinking all of you know Get good water from your drums. You don't want that. You want them to not be able to get into your drums. So, okay, so you had all that going on. But 
um, I get a hundred gallons of water. I can water my garden. I've never, I've never ran out of water with my, um, my system. I tied in a um, hundred psi um, on man de pump, on demand pump. Yeah, I think I said that right. That's a good idea. Save money and lower the water bill. Oh my God! Yes, it will lower the water bill. You won't even notice when spring and summer come and you're out there watering your garden, and you're getting it straight from um, uh, Mother Nature, which, by the way, is a better water to water your garden with than that of uh, that just coming from the pipes in your house. It's just a better deal. You uh, the the water from your house is designed to kill bacteria and all that stuff inside of it. So why would you put that out in your garden that's going to kill the bacteria and everything in your soil? when in fact you want to save them because they're the reason why your plants are growing. So what I did was um, I started using rainwater, having a look back. And I, I had a good I had a good uh, situation where I found a guy with a, a drum and he, he just gave it to me. He said, you can have it. And another gentleman that said, um, uh, there's a soda company, uh, which was almost, almost right around the corner from me. I went right up there, that soda company, and all you got to do is get the guys $5 for a 55-gallon uh, plastic drum. And the only thing I didn't like about these drum folks was the color. They were both blue. And I said, well, I'm going to have to deal with that because I thought I'd get two white ones. They would blend right in with the, uh, the side of my house. And later on, I just said, what the heck? If you get that mad about the color, just paint them white. You know, so they look better. Just paint them white. But I got to tell you, folks, that that hundred gallon, a uh, hundred pound psi pump, I'm gonna get ready to replace it soon. But uh, it has done its job. It's made from sure flow. It's from sure flow. I bought it right off of our uh, eBay, and uh, it's twelve volts. You get a uh, deep cycle battery, and you hook that thing up, and you won't look back. You will not look back because you you put a hundred. I, I put a hundred foot hose on my drums, and, and sometimes people. I got videos of me out there washing the car with them, you know, and uh, and, and washing the car, and also uh, what's the other thing? Um, yeah, water in the garden. Yeah, and you can look it up to one of them, one of them uh, water things that go from side to side like that. Don't do that, or you can put it to a water hose, uh, or you can put it to you can you can get real fancy, put timers and all that stuff on it. You can do all kind of stuff with it. That's good idea. Save money and lower your water bill. Do you grow cover crops uh, in winter? Which cover crops uh, are best? I can only answer that question by saying this, folks. I do not go out and buy cover crop seeds. The only cover crops that I use are the weeds. They the chop and drop, they my cover crop. And that's what I use. And my soil is pretty. I'm not bragging. I don't mean to do that. But my soil is pretty. And it wasn't always that way. It was always a nasty, brown, hard clay that when the rain hit it, even though I, I used to till back in the day about 20 years ago, I had to till the ground, and till the ground, get it all nice and fluffy, put my plants in, and then it would rain, and I would look out there and go, what the heck? And all the soil was completely smoothed over, and it had these cracks in it. And I said, wait a minute, is this normal? This doesn't look like in the magazines how they saw it look. This doesn't look pretty like it does in the magazine that I had last week or the, or the book I got from the library. They show gardening, just saw that look like that. I wonder what's going on here. And I found out that soil lacked organic matter. So that's that's that. All right, good ladies and gentlemen. This is the morning garden. I want to thank you very much for tuning in. It's been a real fun time, and I want to thank you. And remember, if you do uh, you know, decide to use any ideas I I I you know mentioned here, you, you might want to subscribe or you might want to uh you know just just make a comment or something like that i appreciate it but i want to thank each and every one of you remember to keep on growing and have a good 
day. Thank you. Thank you very much.